Assalamu alaikum. Hello and good evening everyone. I'm your host Hamza Rahman from FES and I'm back with another live session for you guys as I always promised. So to today we are going to talk about for the first time in FES and for you guys about one of the finest school of Prague. You heard about Prague a lot which is the capital capital city of Czech Republic and the school is Charles International School. I'm here live with Miss Anastasia the chief marketing officer how are you ma'am i'm fine thank you so much and how are you today um, i'm perfectly fine thank you so much uh, for having us i would like you to introduce yourself please and let us know about you and your university thank you so much so once again hello everyone my name is anastasia and i'm representative of charles international school located in the heart of europe fantastic Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. So I'm here today to tell you a bit more about Charles International School and to tell you a bit more about the destination by itself. Uh, so basically, I've also finished my university in the Czech Republic, and that was one of the reasons why I decided to work in this field to help students to have the smooth integration and to enable students, international students from all over the world to explore such a country as the Czech Republic because it had so many so many nice benefits for international students for coming and studying there. So I believe I will just start with a couple of words about Charles International School and I will try to make it as entertaining as possible. Uh, so basically Charles International School, uh, this is the organization which is located in Prague and which helps to combine all the universities of the Czech Republic together to help international students to come to Czech Republic and to follow their career here already. So Charles International school representing huge public universities such as Charles University, worldwide famous for medicine, University of Economics, Czech Technical University, and also hundreds of universities within the whole Czech Republic, which enables us to give students from all over the world to come and choose within more than 1,000 different majors and also provide them with the possibility to go through the foundation program, a pathway after which students will be able to also join public universities of the Czech Republic. I believe uh, I can start with a presentation because, uh, of course, we prepared a nice presentation for you uh, about the destination and about Czech Republic. So in case you've been to Czech Republic, and I'm sure in case you've been to the country, you've been to capital, of course, um, you already know all the impression that Prague can give you. Because we always say, in case you came to Prague once, you will definitely come back because it's one of the most beautiful places you can ever imagine in your life. Uh, so basically, it's one of the most touristic places, not only like, you know, far from Europe, but within the Europe as well. And uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, first of all, Prague is very, very small, which makes it very, very nice because you can literally go from one place to another place super fast and super conveniently. Also, it's very nice the Czech Republic is very safe. Currently, Prague is number six safest place in whole Europe and number 10 safest place in the whole world, which is a very, very nice benefit when you're traveling here as a student and you're planning to spend your student's life in a new destination and a new country. Also amazing thing about Czech Republic is that it was one of the cities that was not destroyed during the Second World War. So it's remaining authentic by now and all of it is actually under UNESCO heritage. So we also, we always saying that Prague is actually like an open space museum where you're just walking and just like, you know, enjoying everything around you because you are doing that kind of in the middle of the historical museum. And from a personal experience, I can say that every time when the students are coming to Prague, first two week, the only impression that we can hear about Prague is just, wow, that's it. Like no words, no explanations, nothing. Just students are so much into the vibe of Prague. They're so much into this atmosphere and so much into this um, authentic feeling of Prague that they literally could not like, you know, just, just having, having this amazing impression. 
So more than that, um, as someone who actually been a student in the Czech Republic, I can tell you that this place is very dynamic. Uh, I don't know how it's possible to combine the small convenience with this literally very, very high dynamic feeling that you're always having. But Czech Republic is actually very open for foreigners. So that's why you can meet literally every like person from every single country all around the world, which is very nice. And basically because of that, you can feel this dynamic atmosphere of being a student in a foreign country. And I can tell you for sure, it doesn't matter from which country you are coming, you will always find someone from your country uh, here in Prague in the Czech Republic. So I wanted to tell a bit more about the destination and why is it actually so famous. So I will just share my presentation with you. And of course, you're more than welcome to tell and ask any questions that you have. And I really hope that you will have a lot of questions. Um, so basically, as I said, as you can see from the picture, Czech Republic and Prague by itself is a very beautiful place. Um, and very, very important thing about you coming to Czech Republic as a student is that you are located in the heart of Europe. And this is fantastic because you are able to travel all over the Europe without any restrictions. With you having the long-term student visa, you are able to visit all the countries around. And not only that, as you can see, the direction and distance uh, from other European famous destinations such as Berlin, Vienna, Munich, Paris, Rome, etc. is very close. So it literally takes you just a couple of hours by bus or just like one hour or two hours by plane to reach any famous destination that you ever wanted to visit within the Europe. So basically, let's assume you came to study your bachelor degree here in Prague. Just imagine how many different places you can visit within three years of living in Prague and traveling all over the Europe which is a very, very amazing opportunity to get integrated into the European culture and to get new, amazing experience. So another thing that I definitely would want to tell you about Charles International School as well, is that as I previously said, we are here for you to make sure that you will choose the proper major, you will choose the proper university, and you will pursue your career path in a very comfortable and suitable way for you. So we offer students a variety of different programs, and we will talk about these programs today with you more in detail. But most Im mostly importantly, is that from our side, we will always be there for you. And I believe those information is very important, not only for students, but for parents as well. So we can guarantee that you will be safe and sound. You will have a smooth transition when it comes to your um, first year of education. And even after you will finish your university, even after you will finish um, your, your foundation program, once you get to Charles International School, you will always remain part of our international family. So it doesn't matter after how many years you will come to us asking for help or any questions or etc. We'll always be here for you, helping you out with any issue that you can have as a foreigner coming for a different for, for pursuing your career in a different country. So let me tell you the most important thing, why Czech Republic is so famous when it comes to studies and why it's so famous for international students. As I said, it's beautiful, definitely, and it has so many advantages. But on the other hand, very important thing is that actually one of the top universities of the whole Europe are located in Prague which enables you as a foreign student to come to Prague and to apply for these universities. So basically, from Charles International School, we are offering you uh, a university placement, direct university placement to top universities of the Czech Republic and whole Europe. So in case your English language and English command is advanced already, at least B2 level, so that you're able to proceed your education for bachelor or for master's degree in English, in this case, you are able to apply directly to the university 
for your bachelor, undergraduate or postgraduate degree without spending time on foundation, pathway, etc., which really helps you to save a lot of time while pursuing your bachelor degree. And in Czech Republic, in most universities, your bachelor will take you only three years. So in three years, you will have already your bachelor degree and plus two years and you will finish your master degree already. So when we talk about the universities, of course, um, world, worldwide famous universities, Charles University. Actually, this university, um, there are two universities, Charles and one another in Bologna. Uh, so they're competing which one was the oldest one, because as you can see, Charles University was founded in 1348, which is very, very long time ago. Um, and as you can see, uh, this university is actually worldwide famous uh, as a very prestigious uh, institution and uh, one of the main like you know strengths of the university is this old school values that they provide and also this university is within one percent top medical institutions in the whole world so basically in case you are interested to become a good doctor in the future you definitely can consider Charles University as the perfect place to go and pursue your medical degree so another very important thing is that in Czech Republic, we are very, very famous for our technical skills. So we were the one who invented fingerprints. We were the one who invented, invented contact lenses and a lot of useful stuff that you're using right now. And I believe one of the reasons why we actually had a chance to do that is this very amazing technical degrees and university that we have located in Prague. So Czech Technical University is actually the oldest university, technical university in whole Europe. Of course, all of those universities that I'm talking right now are within the QS rankings and they are accredited not only within the Europe, but in most countries within the world. So you can be sure that in case you would want to stay in Europe or in case you would want to travel back home, you will have a very valuable diploma with you. And more than that, you will definitely have a lot of useful knowledge that you will obtain while your studies on those universities. Um, so when we talk about Czech technical universities, definitely this is a great choice for someone who would want to pursue his career when it comes to engineering, uh, when it comes to everything connected with uh, any technical um, any technical careers, for example, gaming, artificial technologies, etc. Mm -hmm. So technical university provides so many majors in English language the students can apply to. Um, and actually afterwards, Czech Technical University uh, has an employment rate of 100%. So basically, university guarantee that once you will finish your bachelor or master's degree, you will be 100% employed. And uh, this is, I believe, one of the most important things why you should perceive your degree or your further career. And definitely those universities, they will be able to give you really nice perspectives in the future um, and definitely will give you a great knowledge in the field. So another university that I would want to talk about today is University of Economics, which is also located in Prague. And definitely, this is one of the biggest and most famous economic universities in Central and Eastern Europe. So when we're talking about University of Economics, what we like about it, and as locals in Czech Republic, people from um, Czech Republic, they actually usually apply to University of Economics because this one is very modern. So they basically apply this new technologies while, you know, um, giving knowledge to the students from all over the world. It's very international. It has more than 15,000 students, but more than that, university has uh, more more than 400 connections with different universities from all over the world, which means that you as a student will have an amazing opportunity to come study first year in Prague and then each single semester travel the whole world and participate in Erasmus, Erasmus Mundus, Erasmus Plus and different exchange programs that university provides. 
So just imagine, like, for example, studying in UK or studying in USA or in Japan or any other place in the world by paying the same tuition fee that you're paying for University of Economics. And actually, the tuition fee is very low when it comes to such a high quality university, and it's 3,800 euros per year. So just imagine studying in UK for that money for one semester of one year or any other destination in the world, depends which one you will choose. So as you can see, those three universities, they are able to actually meet the needs of students basically from, from all over the world because uh, basically uh, when we talk about business and economics, when we talk about engineering and some technical majors, and also when it comes to medicine, uh, those majors are in highest demand everywhere. So basically those three universities are able to provide international students with a very high quality degree for a very affordable price. Okay, so as I previously said, um, as Charles International School, we are actually connecting not only those three universities, but we are connecting all the universities of the Czech Republic. So in the end, you are able to apply to more than 1,000 different majors, and you are able to apply to universities not only in Prague, but everywhere within the Czech Republic. Uh, so as I previously said, uh, this program is for students who can actually speak English pretty well already, at least B2 level. So if you're confident in your English language knowledge, and in case you know that you will be able to start your bachelor or master's and feel comfortable studying an English language, then definitely this program is for you. But when it comes, for example, for students who are not that confident about their English language, because we understand that sometimes it's pretty challenging uh, to come and study your bachelor or master's degree in a foreign language straightforward. Uh, so in this case, we are providing students with the University Language Foundation. And we do that also on the base of public universities, such as University of Economics and Czech Technical University. I previously told you about those universities universities. So this foundation year or foundation semester, depending on your language command, you are able to spend on the base of those universities, studying on campus, studying language, English language, also having the basics of Czech language as well. Um, and also in the same time, getting integrated with the culture of the Czech Republic because sometimes it can be challenging to switch straight forward, but with the foundation, with the help of the foundation, you will be able to have this smooth transition into, into your university. Also, this program is good in case you are still not sure about which university you're interested in or which major you're interested in. And while spending your time like studying on foundation, you will be in Prague already. So you will be able to enter each single university you are interested in. You will be able to talk with students that graduated, they're studying currently, and also you will be surrounded by students that are also going to apply for those universities as well. And because of that, you will be able to make a proper decision about the future major or about the future uh, about the future university. Also, when it comes to foundation programs, in Czech Republic, it works in the way that it's one standard foundation where during the year you are studying language, right? So let's assume you applied for the foundation program. You come to Prague, we meet you in Prague, you're having this smooth transition, and you start learning English language on the base of the university. So you're studying on campus. So basically after that, after half a year, like first semester, your language already improved, you know exactly which majors and which universities you are interested in. Let's assume you want to actually perceive your medical degree. So from second semester, you are able to choose additionally classes depending which majors you are interested in. So for example, if it is medical degree from the second semester, you are able to study additionally biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Those classes that you will need for admission for the university. 
So basically, during the second semester, you're studying these additional classes, and also you're preparing for your entrance examinations. And in Czech Republic, after the foundation, the students are able to apply to as many majors and as many universities as they want to. So let's assume that you applied for five different universities and majors and got admitted to three universities or three different majors. So like this, you are able to choose where exactly you would want to study. More than that, for all our students that participating in the foundation program, we guarantee that they will get admitted to public university in the Czech Republic. So during the foundation, you will have your personal advisor who will also help you to evaluate possible options in Prague, outside of Prague, within the whole country with different universities and different majors. So like that, we are able to make sure that in case you will participate in the program, you will have a nice attendance. In this case, we guarantee that you will definitely enter a public university in the Czech Republic and pursue your bachelor or master's degree straight after the foundation program. So as I said, language learning and smooth integration, exactly. So when we talk about requirements uh, for the foundation, we do not require any language commands. So at least it should be A1, A2 in case it's one semester. So it should be at least B1 because in the end of the program, you're supposed to, to have a language B2 level. English B2 level. So basically, there is no entrance exams because um, after your foundation year, you will undergo like an entrance exam depending which faculty and which major you will apply to. So during first year of the foundation, as well as during the first year of your um, direct entrance to bachelor and the masters, uh, we will be here for you. And what we will do from our side to make sure that you will have a smooth integration. So from the point when you will arrive to the airport, we will be the one who will meet you in the airport. So we will organize the transportation from the airport to the place of your accommodation. Uh, we, will we will have for you the proper introduction with showing you around, with having walking tours within Prague. Um, we will help you out. We will give you the local Czech SIM card with the access to the internet so that you will be able to get in contact with your relatives, parents, etc. Also, we will help you out when it comes to any questions and details such as transportation ticket, or for example, when it comes to your student card, etc. So in any details, even like, for example, managing your university schedule or anything like that, you will always be able to find us there for you, which is a very important thing. So I believe I will switch back to the video right now. And in case we already had any questions, I will be glad to actually answer them as well. Uh, and meanwhile, I will also have a couple of things and tell you a couple of things that are important for you to know as the person who are coming to Czech Republic to perceive a degree. So, um, first of all, uh, when it comes to Czech Republic, uh, as I said, is the perfect country to actually be a student here. Um, we have all different discounts for students uh, and we have very affordable prices for students so just imagine having uh, your transportation ticket uh, for the whole month duration as a student just for five six euros so for the whole month you are able to travel all the different types of transportation and we do have a very nice transportation in Prague um, which very like you know um, very easy and convenient uh, because as I said previously the city is very small and basically you have the proper schedule when exactly the tram is supposed to come and trams are coming each single minute and you have an exact time to, to the destination that you are coming. So because Prague is convenient your travel time for from the place of accommodation to place of your classes, doesn't matter is it foundation or is it direct admission program, will take you around 20, 25 minutes. So basically in case it's located near the metro, it can take you even less, which is a very nice thing. So when we talk about affordability of the Czech Republic as a destination, 
Another great benefit, as I said, that you can have discounts basically everywhere. Uh, you can have a very nice mobile, uh, like, you know, data for, for you being a student. Uh, you can have discounts even in McDonald's if you're a student. So it's very good to be student in the Czech Republic uh, and different things like that. Uh, so also when it comes to accommodation, it's super hard to find accommodation in Prague because as I said, it's very small. But for our students, what we do, uh, for you, we will book a accommodation for the whole duration of your stay. So basically we book it for a year when you arrive and then afterwards when if you will in case you would want to prolong it definitely you can do that. And we always uh, give you three different options depending on your preferences. Uh, the cheapest option starts from 180 euros per month, which is definitely very cheap when it comes to accommodation. So you will be accommodated in the public dormitory depending which university you will study in or which foundation course you will study in. And basically you will be able to live in those accommodation for you know your whole duration and even when you will enter your university after the foundation. So different accommodation options can get up to 600 euros per month where you will live in your own studio. Uh, so basically, depending on your demands, depending on your needs, we will be able to have a proper place of accommodation for you uh, where you would love to spend your students' student years, which will be very convenient for you to come from this place to your place of classes and which hopefully you will definitely enjoy. So this is the thing when it comes to accommodation. Um, so basically, when we talk about the Czech Republic as a destination, as I mentioned, um, it has a lot of different benefits. Uh, and of course, it can be challenging for you to come to a different destination, to different country to pursue your degree. And as I said before, from my personal experience, and I'm dealing with students for a very long time by now, and I saw students of different ages that are coming, some of them are scared, some of them are excited, uh, some of them are not scared at all, they've been waiting waiting for a long time, they just wanted to come to Prague so bad. So all of them eventually are able to find something in Prague and they're able to integrate into Prague and into environment. And from our side, this is what we are trying to do for you. We are trying to make sure that you will be safe that you will feel comfortable, that you will feel integrated, and then definitely you will feel as the part of the international family. We call in Charles International School our international family. And we're doing that for a reason, because we do have students from all over the world coming from year to year, and all of them, they feel like they're part of our family. So even for you to know, like I will always be in Prague, of course, you will deal with the team. Maybe you will have a different person meeting you in the airport, different person doing the registration for you, and different person being your personal advisor. But all of the team will always be there for you. And in case you will have any questions, you can always call me. You can always call our representatives in your country directly. So you can always find this piece of advice. And the parents definitely can be confident, and parents definitely can sleep well at night knowing that their kids are safe. And I believe when it comes to such an important decision in life as moving to another country, even just for your students' years, this is the most important thing that all the parents and all the students should know. And we are here for that, to make sure that you will have the most amazing experience coming to Prague, coming to Czech Republic and enjoying it to the fullest. So in case we have any questions, I will be glad to answer any of them. Thank you so much for such a brief introduction of yours, your country, your city, your, your Charles International School. Um, just, I just have a question because uh, to be very honest with you, Anastasia, you have been covered so many things in such a short span of time. So there are a lot of questions from my side, uh, actually, which which are being very clear. So just move on to the comments because there are so many comments we need to uh, you know address for you because people are watching you live and they wanted to ask uh, so many things. So Sebaria says hello everyone. Musa Ali, Assalamu alaikum. Hello uh, Bilal. Mehru Shafiq says hello everyone. Thank you so much for uh, greeting us, everyone. Just jumping on to the first question, which is. Uh, Hamza Kadir is asking how much cost for Czech Republic study or work visa? 
So I think we do not offer any work visa, regardless of studies, right? Exactly. When it comes to studies, students are able, like basically when we talk about foundation and we talk about the direct admission, student is obtaining a long-term student's permit, student's visa. So basically, when it comes to work, you are legally allowed to work while being a student for 20 hours per week. So basically, with the salaries of the Czech Republic, you will be able to pay, for example, for your dormitory, maybe for some basic needs, etc. Of course, it's not the full-time work. It's different, but you're not supposed to work full-time because you are actually being a student and you will have classes every single day from Monday till Friday. So when we talk about the employment, I actually wanted to talk a bit more about that because I know that this thing is very important for students from all over the world, and this is definitely one of the most asked questions ever. Uh, so basically, when it comes to employment in Czech Republic, an unemployment rate is the lowest in the whole Europe. And I can explain you why. The main reason is that Czech Republic is very small. We have only 10 million people living in the whole country, right? And we do have international companies coming to Prague because we are developing, an economy developing. So just imagine Microsoft coming, opening positions for people to work and there's no one to work. And because of that, we're that open for international students to come and actually afterwards to stay in the Czech Republic and work in the Czech Republic. Because when it comes to international companies, actually they would always prefer the foreigner rather than the local person. Because you can speak more than one language. You can speak English and plus you can speak your native language, that, which means that you will be oriented on particular market as well. So when it comes to employment, definitely students that after graduation, they're able to find their work pretty easily because as I said, we do have a shortage of um, basically working force. Uh, and because of that, students uh, are really, really literally able to find the work easily after their graduation. And also they are able to work part-time as the students during their student life as well. Thank you so much for telling us. So uh, I have a question. I wanted to add it on to the comment that you said students are being allowed to work at, while they are studying as, you know, 80 hours for a month, 20 hours for a week. So after the completion of the degree, there are employability chances as well. Uh, am I correct, right? Exactly. So is there any kind of, uh, if you do know about UK, there's a, there's a thing which is called post-study work visa like which is uh, after completion of your degree, you are being awarded a year or two years or three years to you know, settle down yourself into that specific country to find a job to you know, just get into the industry of that specific country. So is there anything you guys are offering? Okay, so basically in the Czech Republic, after your graduation, uh, you're already not on the student visa anymore. So accordingly with the rules, you will have from three to half, uh, three months to half a year to find new work that will actually officially employ you and as i said employment in the czech republic is actually not that uh, complicated because we are lacking you know people of working and we are literally inviting uh, people to come and work uh, and because of that um, because of that actually uh, it's more than enough to have three months to change the type of visa and actually in that case students will have already the working visa the one that actually we've been asked for Okay, thank you, Anastasia, for this answer. So I have a comment. Uh, Mr. Zidijat is asking, sir, when embassy will open. Uh, Zidijat, I would like to tell you, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. We are not exactly sure about when embassies are opening. So as soon as I'll get an update, I'll get back to you. Numer Khalid is asking, country? Uh, uh, the embassies, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I wanted to tell a couple of words about the embassies of the Czech Republic. And we know that currently, like, you know, and actually regarding the whole COVID and stuff like that. First of all, I'm very sorry because I was supposed to start my speech from actually wishing you all to stay safe during the COVID times. Um, because right now we're not operating on, on normal conditions and there's like very strange things going on around the world. So I really hope that you and your families are staying safe and you are doing well during these times. And we know how complicated it is to make decisions about like, you know, going somewhere or moving or starting during the times like this. Um, currently, the Czech Republic is actually one 
of the first country, so actually been first to actually end the quarantine on Europe. So from 25th of May, the Czech Repu Republic almost recovered from the quarantine. So basically right now, when we go outside, we're not obligated to wear face masks anymore. So everything is reopened right now. So we're sure that in September, universities will already open again. So you will be able to study on campus. And for example, like right now, if it would be a bad situation in your country and you will not be able to travel to Prague, still the university will provide you a possibility to study online until the point when it will be safe for you to travel and come to Czech Republic. So once you will be able to come, like you will just join your classes already here in Prague. So embassy has been open, but right now they started to reopen in a lot of countries. So basically we expect that already in the beginning of June, all of the embassies will be open again, which will enable all the students to to actually send their application, visa applications, etc. And this is definitely one of the things right now why Czech Republic is getting very, very high interest. Because unfortunately, in some very like famous destinations, it's not even possible to travel right now because they do have more complicated situation. But since Czech Republic is coping pretty well by now, we know for sure that in September, it will be safe and sound for students to come to Prague, study in Prague without any complications, any issues. And uh, basically uh, you will not be scared about your safety. Oh, thank you so much for this answer. And this is you have a question that how many intakes do we do you, uh, Charles International School is offering? Okay, so when we talk about direct admission in public universities, there's only one intake. So basically those one the education starts from se september beginning of october so basically right now because of the covid we have a great opportunity to still apply for the direct admission because usually all the deadlines for the direct admission they they actually end up in the end of April. And after that, you're not able, you will need to wait one more year. But right now, because of the current situation, all the universities, they prolong the deadlines and you are still able to apply for the direct admission until the end of June. So we still have the whole months, which is not that much time, unfortunately, um, because we still need to think about the visa process, about the feather, uh, you know, about the visa preparation documents, etc. Uh, so basically, when it comes to direct admission, you know, so we have pretty much limitations in time, but until the end of June applications, we can still accept the applications. Uh, when it comes to foundation program, there are two different intakes. So there's a possibility to study for an annual foundation which will start in the end of September, like classes will start in the end of September. And right now we will receive the application. We accept the application until the middle of July. So basically uh, after that, the intake for annual foundation will be over, but there still will be open intake for one semester foundation. So basically students will study just one semester starting from January and they will finish their classes in May and like in um, March to April, they will apply for their universities here in the Czech Republic so that from September next year, they also they already will be able to study for their bachelor or master degrees okay so you are saying for the foundation that would be january 2021 next year right exactly so this is when the classes will start basically you can apply already now for one semester but it's not the same program i mean the program is kind of same but it's different amount of classes and different amount of hours because for annual one students are studying for the whole year for two semesters and for one semester foundation obviously they study just from january from beginning of january until the end of may so basically in case your english command is better at least like B1 level and you just need to have a bit of improvement before your university admission, then definitely you can consider one uh, semester foundation as well. Okay, thank you, Anastasia. Moving on to the another question. Numer Khalid is say, asking country. So yes, Numer, I am Hamza from FES from Pakistan and my um, uh, Anastasia is from uh, Czech Republic Prague. 
So Arslan Rafiq is asking, is IELTS necessary for masters? Uh, yes, IELTS is necessary. Uh, basically, when we when it comes to masters, it starts from 5.5 up to 6.5, depending which major you are applying to. So I would say that, like, you know, the, the average one where we can guarantee that you will have much higher chances to get it needed should be at least 6.0, 6.5. So CIS is accepting anything of uh, to IELTS, for example, TOEFL, for example, yeah. Pearson course? Anything which is um, actually accredited or within a common framework, like, you know, so basically it's accredited within the European Union and can confirm your language command is accepted. Also, in case you've been studying previously in English language, for example, in your school or for your bachelor, you do not need any proof when you're applying for your master's or after school in English applying for the bachelor. So I could take it like if the person is applying for CIS or if he wants to go for the direct or she wants to go for the direct university, they can have the English proficiency certificate from the university or from the college respective. Uh, it's not like from the college. So basically, I don't think that just college from itself will have a European accreditation to give such a diploma. We are talking about the fact that if the student been studying in English, so his class has been in English and education been in English, in that case, he do not need any proof. But just having the separate, for example, exam from the university, unfortunately, will not, will not work because it's most probably not accredited in Czech Republic. But definitely, I'll store or any other equivalent is accepted as long as it can prove that you have at least like B2 language level. And what about the students from CIEs, the people who are coming from the background of O levels and A levels studies, which is actually a Cambridge British system, you know? That. Yes, definitely. Those are accepted. Okay. Thank you, Anastasia. Moving on to the next question. Uh, so I hope, Arslan Rafiq, you have uh, your answer. Uh, Ali Nava says, hello. Nora Freedy says, good evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us. Shahir Aslam is asking, how much does it cost? Okay, so definitely the price is a very important thing. So I believe I slightly mentioned already the prices and how affordable is actually the Czech Republic. Uh, so let me tell you, first of all, the living costs and the living expenses. So I would say just the living expenses would be around like from 300 euros per month, depending on your needs. Uh, plus, of course, the accommodation, which starts from 180 euros per month. So this is when it comes about living costs. When it comes to education, education so basically uh for example let's assume that you decided to choose the bachelor program right uh so the bachelor for the direct admission starts from 1000 euros and can get up to 5800 uh for technical university unfortunately right now direct admission for medicine is finished already because the last deadline was until 17th of may so in case you want to actually go and pursue your um, degree in medicine we recommend you to go to the foundation first and only after that proceed already with your degree for medicine any case since medical university is very competitive and it's very famous and it's accepting like literally thousands of applications from all over the world we're always recommending students to actually go through the foundation first because you're still preparing for one more year, being in an environment, you're still studying and learning. So definitely foundation in case you want to secure you actually entering the university will be a better option. So basically, you are paying the price of the foundation year first, and after that, you're also paying the price of the university. So for medicine, this can be from 12 to 14,000 euros, depending which faculty is that. Also, it can be a pharmaceutical faculty, it can be general medicine, it can be dentistry. So the price range is from 12 to 14,000 euros, which is very affordable when it comes to medicine, and especially in 1% top medical universities within the world so basically um tuition fees in czech republic are very 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 cheap and in case you would want to study after the foundation because as i told you direct admission enables you to actually have an online exams so you are not supposed to come to czech republic and you are not supposed to have exams 
you can have like online essays, Skype interview, etc. But you are not supposed to come physically to Prague and have any exams, which is very convenient. You can go through whole application process just sitting at home and not traveling anywhere, right? So of course, in this case, the amount of majors that are valuable are much less than after the foundation, where you can just be here in Prague and go through the physical admission in those universities. So when it comes after foundation options, so the cheapest one starts from 200,000 euros per year. 200, which is not the registration fee. This is actually the price for one year education. This is Environmental Engineering in Life University of University of Life Sciences in Prague. So basically, as you can see, depending on your budget, you can find the options from 200 and up to 14,000 euros for medicine. So when it comes to university for econom of economics, they have a standard price for bachelor of 3,800 euros per year, which is uh, literally very, very small amount for a public university like that. For technical university, it's 4,800 euros for the whole year of studies. So you can pay each semester, for example, right? So you're like first year, you can pay the whole year, like University of Economics, you're obligated to pay the whole year. And after that, you're paying each semester separately. So as you can see, when it comes to prices in general, it's very affordable. But more than that, depending on your personal budget, you can find options that are lower in price, that are higher in price, depending which majors and which universities you are applying to. Thank you. Thank you for this answer. So again, I have a question from Sayyid Shabir. How much is the tuition fee for master program? How much scholarship offered? So um, as we have just discussed it, um, if you could just add into it, because I was going to answer him for this, please. Okay, I, I can do that. <laughs> okay, so when we talk about the scholarship, so basically in the Czech Republic, as you can see, uh, so the, the like kind of the strategy of the public universities is lowering the tuition fee for international students rather than giving the scholarship. So when we're talking about 200 euros tuition per year, you do not need the scholarship for that, definitely. Even though for all the international students, you also have some additional scholarship that you can apply every single month. So it's around like 100 euros for two months or something like that, which is definitely not much. Uh, but because of the lowering of the price, basically all the students are able to get the scholarship of the low prices rather than just one or two students having like you know the scholarship as as a talented student so once again uh, for example as i said as an international student you are able to have some amount of money each month which is not a lot but still definitely a nice thing like you know even to go for a coffee um and definitely in case you will have a higher marks university can increase this amount from 100 to like 200 or etc depending on your marks but you should never you should not definitely expect the highest school like super high scholarships because the price that you're paying for your tuition already lowered by the universities okay. thank you so much once again for this answer okay another question from shiraz javed yusuf Zay. please guide us on international scholarship as we have just spoke about it thank you so much anastasia so I hope Shiraz Javed Yusuf Zay, you have got your answer. Uh, Sayyid Shabir is asking, IELTS requirement for undergraduate and postgraduate. Yes, Shabir, uh, we do have an IELTS requirement, which is uh, starting from 5.5 to 6.5. Yes, for masters, it's actually from 5.5. When we talk about the bachelor, it can be actually from 5.0. And for some faculties of University of Economics, it's not required. But from our side, we always require students some confirmation of educate of, uh, of language command. Uh, because just imagine, you think that you're very good in English without any proof or anything like that. And then you come to Prague, you start your education, and you can understand that you do not understand anything. So basically you will not feel comfortable studying and then you will be upset about your classes and about your university, etc. And from our side, as I said, our goal is to make sure that you will be a happy student. So because of that, for both bachelor and masters, we always asking students to provide the proof, IELTS, TOEFL or any equivalent proof to make sure that your language command is good. Okay. 
just a quick uh, question on that. Um, do you know about Duolingo, Anastasia? Duolingo, of course. I'm using that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are accepting Duolingo as well, right? Um, no, actually, no. In Czech Republic, we don't. Okay. Uh, we don't. Like, mainly, I would say that students should actually take an IELTS or TOEFL because those two are actually like accepted by all the universities in case it would be something else than that definitely we can check with universities but there could be 50 50 probability that like you know they will need to do a research is this one accredited can we actually consider that one of being credible etc so with IELTS and TOEFL you will definitely know for sure that you are actually eligible for the program because for example any case if you're having any other certificate um, let's assume the requirements from 5.5 to 6.5 and you got another one like ABC or any other thing so you cannot even be sure is it actually be the same level as they are requiring so any case when it comes to any proof of your language command we always insist of uh, IELTS and we always insist of TOEFL in the first place in case you do have any other certificate which one you think is actually accredited and could be possible then you can double check it with us because there are many of certificates right now provided so you can just double check it with us we will check it with the university as well and make sure that you're like in case it's not accredited then we will ask you to provide the IELTS or TOEFL. so i could take this as uh, if you guys had, uh, you know, IELTS is accepted over there. So do you know about UK VI IELTS? Um, it's also one of the things that we will need to check from the universities, but most probably it is because most probably most of the certificates are actually accredited uh, here in Czech Republic as well and are also acceptable from the universities. Because IELTS is being like, um, it, it lasts for two years, but UK VI lasts for three years. And because it is UKVI, so it is being enrolled in all over the countries. So, you know, usually over here in Pakistan, people are more into, because what they are thinking that if they are going for an attempt for an IELTS, so is it, isn't it better to get for a UKVI? So people are more into UKVI. That is why I've asked. Thank you it so much. It definitely should be accepted by all the universities. So in case the students will have that type of certificate, it will not be an issue as well. Okay. And he says, yeah, I have a question from um, uh, one of my students, Maksud Ahmed, because uh, he, he asked a couple of questions in my uh, earlier uh, sessions as well. I would like to answer it because uh, he just asked, is there any fully funded scholarship for masters? So to be very honest with you people who are watching us, who are listening to us, the prices starts from 200 euros only. And then they, you know, just that they, they are going uh, a bit higher. So as uh, we have discussed it before that, on the on the basis of those 200 euros i don't think so this is kind of a scholarship as well what, what do you think of it? it it's kind of a scholarship for me to be very honest with you so we could take this like yes it's not a fully funded scholarship you just have to spend for your living expenses but yes if you're talking about the university uh, fee university expenses so things things are way too cheaper compared to other countries, specifically English speaking countries. Am I right, ma'am? Exactly. Okay. I have a question. How long student can stay in the Czech Republic after completing his study program as we have discussed this? Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's three to six months only? Exactly. So students will have from three to six months to change his visa purpose and switch to his uh, actually uh, working visa. And also, which is a very nice thing, the very convenient for students, after you already came to the Czech Republic, you will not need to travel back home to prolong your visa. You're doing that here already on the territory of Czech Republic. And usually it's much less problematic than applying for visa because you just bringing the pack of documents you're just giving it to like you know to the foreign police and they just like you know going through that in a couple of months and giving you another like you know visa confirmation so basically after first application the process of prolonging the visa is actually not that complicated thank you uh i just forgot a question that you know strikes in my mind once it will i'll, I'll get that question I'll, I'll definitely get back to you jia ali says assalamualaikum everyone walaikum assalam okay Ali Khan is asking, as in Pakistan, it's, it's a bit tricky question, you need to understand that. As in Pakistan, high school ends at 12 years of education. So foundation is necessary for the student. If yes, 
what's the minimum percentage required and ice okay perfect so as i said um first of all when it, when we talk about the foundation i've been explaining the main things why the students should or should not apply for the foundation in case you finish 12 classes you already can start your bachelor or masters and the necessity of foundation is right now from your side so in case you feel that you are not ready when it comes to language command or you still need some additional integration of the foundation you can apply for the foundation and go through it first in case Case you completed 12 classes and your English language is good, uh, then you need at least 5.0 when it comes to bachelor, much better 5.5, 6.0 um, to apply for bachelor and for master's degree starting also from 5.5. So at least B2 English level. In this case, you were able to apply for your bachelor already. When it comes to foundation, we, as I said, we do not require any language certificate. It's required only for the direct admission. For the foundation, you are supposed to have a basic language knowledge because for annual one, because first of all, it's kind of very complicated to learn until B2 level from just learning an alphabet. And secondly, our teachers, all of them are native speakers. So they're going to explain English language in English language. So you're supposed to have basic understanding from at least A1, A2 level so that you will also feel comfortable during the foundation classes as well. Um, another question I wanted to like to add in, um, as I mentioned to you before that I forgot, what is the specific gap maintenance? Like for example, if a person has completed his or her 12th grade in 2017, for example, in 2017 or in 2016. So that makes a prior gap of four years. So I just don't know, is it acceptable in CIS? Um, it's acceptable in public universities, but basically universities, honestly, they do not care about that much. So basically, let's assume you finished your school in 2017 and right now you just decided to apply for your bachelor degree, right? So basically, when it comes to university, it's not really that big requirement. They're not really taking care about that. But the complication can be while applying for visa already. So while applying for visa, they will definitely ask you a question why you decided to study your bachelor after such a big gap so basically you will need to explain clearly why you did so and why after such a big gap you decided to study actually abroad so the bigger gap the more complicated it would be to explain in the embassy why you decided to actually study after such a long gap but in any case there is still like you know visa chances for students like that but the bigger gap, as I said, the more complicated the visa obtainment can be, especially in case student could not really explain why he had such a long time without studying and decided to go abroad. So what do you recommend? Like how much prior gap it should be? Is it just one year or two years? Definitely would be better if there would be no gap. <laughs> That's the best option ever. But even in case you do have a gap, like in case it's already more than, I would say, five years for bachelor, then it will get very complicated. Even like from three to five years, it can get complicated in the embassy, but it still can be okay for masters. So for masters, this gap is actually bigger because you can explain that you've been working after your bachelor and right now to actually like... Um, have better skills and better qualification, you decided to go abroad and study. So even in case you have a bigger gap at applying for your master's, it actually could not be like, can be not an issue at all. But for bachelor, I would say like, you know, one, two years is still fine. Three to five years, uh, you will need to make sure that you will be 100 ready for your visa interview. And basically what we do also from our side is that we are making sure that we are also consulting students on the, or not only on visa documents, because definitely we're helping out, we're checking all the documents, also making sure that like student is 100% ready, but also we are making sure the student is ready for the application for the embassy. So in case you're even having such a big gap, we will be the one calling you and making sure that you know how to explain that, you know, so just to make sure to increase your chances to have like successful application for university and then having successful application for visa. So this is basically our job as well. So we are trying to increase the chances of the student to get admitted to the university uh, because we do have an amazing team of our teachers. All of them are native speakers. They are really cool guys. And those cool guys, uh, they are also 
also checking your resume, they're checking your motivation letter, they're checking your essays, uh, they're helping you out to make sure that you actually can improve your application documents enough to get admitted to public university with the high, much, much higher chances. Okay. So you just have told that um, the, the bachelor's is for three years, right? So um, what... Like I can tell you exact, uh, you know, I unfortunately, like when it comes to embassies, uh, they do not have a specific rules and it's not stated anywhere that you should get, you should have this gap or this gap. I'm just telling from my personal experience working for years with the students, sometimes even students with the bigger gaps, like three, five years getting their visas easily. Sometimes students with one or two years gap actually getting rejection for their visa. So unfortunately, there is no such a rule for all of that. But but I would say from the personal experience, one, two, three years is actually not such a big problem. Like sometimes three to five can be already additional questions from the embassy. But once again, even from my personal experience, I had a lot of students who actually got admitted. But unfortunately, it's not like I can tell for sure because embassy anytime, like, you know, just it's not specific rule, unfortunately, for that. Uh, pardon me, actually, you did not get my question properly because my mic just got stuck in too much work. My question was the duration of bachelor's is for three oh, years. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry for that. What is the duration? Oh, no bachelor duration is three years so like depending of course for some uh, like, like technical majors uh, it's actually four years or three and a half but in general especially when it comes to economics it's actually three years and when it comes to masters it's two years two years for masters and three years for bachelors could be probably because most of the engineering side they are for four years right exactly thank you, thank you so much Anastasia for this Okay, uh, Bilal is asking what about work permit after uh, for students? Yes, Bilal, work permit is allowed. You are allowed to work for 20 hours, weekly 80 hours, monthly and 40 hours fortnightly if you're going for CIS or in Czech Republic. Am I right? <laughs> yes, everything is right. No, I'm just recalling myself as well. <clears throat> okay, so it's a bit tricky and uh, a question from Ali Khan. Tell us about bank statement required and what should be the duration of the bank statement because this is the most asked question from the parents' side. Okay, and perfect. Sure. So what do you have <laughs> While you're applying for your visa, you're supposed to have a bank statement from, from your bank. And basically, the amount of money that you're supposed to have is at least 4,500 euros. So basically, those bank statement is supposed to be not less than 90 days from the time when you took it from the bank. Uh, so basically, when it comes to those bank statements, the most important thing is that it's supposed to be stated the card number, the holder of the number uh, of the card and for example in case it's parents not the kid the one for example like kid is not 18 years old and the account belongs to parents so it also should be stated that ch child actually has an access to this amount of money so basically now for the embassy 4500 euros would be enough to know that you have enough of funds for one year to live in the czech republic and cover all your expenses okay Thank you so much. I hope, Mr. Ali, you have got the answer correctly. Okay. Um, he, uh, another question, how much post-study work is just granted to the students studying in Czech Republic University? I want to tell you again, we have just discussed it before. Once you are done with your degree, you will be allowed to stay for three to six months to change your visa into another, you can say that job, job visa. Am I correct again? Yes, sure. Yes, correct. <laughs> oh, because I just lost you. Okay, so another, I have so many of questions. Can I work while I'm studying? Yes, Shabi, you can work while you are studying. How much gap is acceptable for FSA level? Mr. Ali Kazmi, uh, we do not recommend uh, the applications with the gaps, but yes, if it is justifiable, then we could, uh, as Anastasia says, that uh, university does not uh, even bother to have that the student who is you know, uh, maturing a gap. But the problem is to get the visa from the embassy, you need to justify your gap, right? Exactly. Okay, Alikana is asking, does Czech Republic encourage mean applicant? Okay, this is, uh, this Alikana guy is such a very talented guy. He 
he actually questions which i wanted to ask does czech republic encourage main applicant with spouse visa Okay, so um, so you mean like the visa, the one reunion with the family, for example, if you have wife and you're coming as a student, she will be able to come with you. Accordingly, with the laws of the Czech Republic, uh, like this reunion visa is possible, but it's possible only when you are working, because this reunion is based on the fact that your spouse, for example, needs some financial support and it, she actually could not, like, for example, financially be maintained without you, right? So as a student, you are not allowed to work so logically you could not financially support your wife to have a reunion for the visa so as a student you for example can send an official invitation for the short-term visa for example for your sister brother parents wife etc so that she would be able to come for like for example duration um, less than 19 days, days. Um, but once you will start working in the Czech Republic after your graduation, you're officially allowed for your wife to apply for the reunion with the family as well for the kids, for example. Um, so basically it's more than uh, possible and it's a very common practice, but already when you are financially maintaining and having uh, basically earnings, you know, but not when you are a student. Okay, thank you, Anastasia. I have another question for you. Is there any placement and any placement charges? Um, okay, what do you mean by that question? Any placement charges? I'll tell you. Uh, in UK, because um, as, I, as I've told you before, the audience is from all over Pakistan. So in UK, what exactly is happening for masters, they are offering placements programs in which they are good you you can call them a sandwich program if you heard of it okay yeah sure so is yeah. there yeah um let me explain you the system how it works in the czech republic when it comes to fees and etc so basically when it comes to the foundation program you're just paying the price of this foundation preparatory course and after that you're just paying separately tuition fee for the university that's it so any that you will not have any application fee for example to charles international school or to university or to anyone else after you will finish the foundation yeah when we are talking about the direct admission then you're paying the application fee of 1000 euros and after that you are paying like you know the university tuition fee separately so yes, there is an application fee for the direct admission, but for the foundation program, there is no application fee. And after undergoing the foundation program, you directly go to the university for masters or for bachelors. Okay, thank you. You just answer for another question that what is the application charges? I just felt like I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any application charges over there? So uh, you mean like an application fee? So there is only application fee for the direct admission of one thousand euros, as I said. But for the foundation, there is no application fees. There is only the price of the foundation program, and after that, you proceed straight to the bachelor's okay. or masters. So Mohammed um, Wakas is asking any post study work visa undergrad or postgrad degree. Yes, there is no such post study work visa. You will get three to six months to get a job because. And uh, now I need to, you know, fasten up because I have more than 80 comments right now to read up. Kelly says, wonderful session. Thank you. Uh, tuition fee and medi uh, medicine studies. Yes, we do. Uh, CIS do offer medicine undergrad courses. Please, Bilal Power, I'll get back to you after this. Maybe Shafiq is asking, what about the current situation due to COVID-19 things? I, I hope you can, you know, carry me out. Due to COVID-19, how things change? Application are open. Then open for coming semester. Yes, my wish of it. Applications are being open. We do have a specific time until 30th of June. So please send your application to us so we will proceed you to the university in upcoming September intake. Right? Exactly. And I believe there are also like the question regarding the COVID. So as I previously said, the currently Czech Republic, the great benefit of the country is that we actually almost recovered from the COVID. So this is a very good news when it comes to application for the university and actually which simplifies the whole process. So I, currently like, like COVID, it's fortunately not an issue when it comes already to the Czech Republic. Thank God. Thank God for that. 
So one comment I would like to read out loud. One more best session. You are doing excellent job, FES. Especially you are the best, Hamza Abdul Rahman. Thank you, Sebareyas. Thank you. That means totally a lot. Totally agree. Totally agree. Hamza is doing great. I'm trying my best as well here. So I will appreciate some nice comments from my side as well. This this is what I really wanted to tell. This this is one of the best and the lengthy session because you have told us each and everything in so much detail. Like if you could see, yeah, like I I was excited, you know, like reading out the comments that. the thing which coming up next right on my face you are going to answer it before prior so that is wonderful and thank you so much for coming thank you so much it's a pleasure to work with such a great audience and i really thank you for all your questions so any case any time you will have them we mean hamza we always will be here for you to answer all of them thank you <laughs> yes i will love to Okay, Ramatullah says which courses are offered? I mean, which discipline can we apply for? Ramatullah, I will tell you in detail after the session that there are so many disciplines in which CIS is working. So, prior, if you are going uh, to CIS, you will be deputed into that university where exactly you wanted to get your majors. Am I correct? Exactly. So basically, as I said right now, for the direct admission, for example, there is like some uh, majors that are available for the deadlines. So basically, um, you, I'm going to share all the majors because there are a lot of them that are impossible for me just to list. Just a lot of them for masters and for bachelors. And accordingly, with your interest, you will be able to actually choose the university, and you will be able to choose the major, which still allows you to apply for the direct admission until the end of June. So. In case you would be interested in some of those majors, and basically those some one of the like most um, majors in demand. So we're talking about economics, international business, international relations. Uh, also, we're talking about engineering, etc. So the list is actually very uh, long. Uh, so most of the students they are able to actually really easily choose something from the list. But in case you are interested in something more specific, like for example medicine, uh, or as I said, we have more than 1,000 different majors. In this case, you will need to go through the foundation course. And after that, apply for those major already here in the Czech Republic. Okay. So, uh, number one, Mr. Malik is asking. I want to apply in Sweden. What is the procedure? And then the visa process is going to start. So, Mr. Malik, I will get back to you after the session for Sweden. Today, we are talking about Prague, which is in which is the capital of Czech Republic. Thank you okay. so much, by the way, for your comment. I, I do appreciate that. At least you just come up and you ask your query regarding of Sweden. Okay, thank you. And I also wanted to add a couple of words about visa, if I can, because we haven't actually talked that much about the visa, and I believe this is a very important issue for students. Uh, just a couple of words, uh, because like basically, uh, what we will do from our side is that uh, we are going to send you the confirmation of education from the university and also the confirmation of studies. And after that, basically after the admission, you will have a time to prepare all the documents and apply for visa. And basically, in case we're talking about Uh, Pakistan, then in this case you're going to apply in Islamabad. There is an embassy of the Czech Republic located there. Uh, so basically you will be able to apply there for your visa. And since we're talking about public universities, um, like your documents will be actually uh, uh, proceed not more than two months. Usually it takes even less than that. Um, and after two months the embassy is going to tell you exact answer about your application. Uh, also when we're talking about the direct admission, the visa process is much simpler than that because basically you are already a student for the bachelor or for master's degree it's not the preparatory course it's not the foundation you having the different type of visa which is 24 which is still long term student visa but you already have the status of being a student so in this case application it's even easier because the only thing you need to do is just to come to the embassy Give your fingerprints, and maybe they will just ask you a question: Where are you going? Which country, etc. So in this case, application is even visa application is even easier than that. Okay, so FPS Lahore resumed operation on not yet. Hamza Kadir, I'll get back to you on this because I officially I did not uh, get the uh, details from my uh, head office. Fawad Ali is asking how much bank statement is required. So Fawad, we have talked about the bank statement. I would you know just wanted to rephrase it. That forty five hundred euros should be there reflecting in your account, and the statement would be ninety days prior, at the time of applying. Am I correct? Exactly. Ah, thank you so much because I learned a lot from you. <laughs> so this now we just say is a good session. Alisan, what is the initial deposit amount? Okay, 
uh, one more question. What's the initial deposit amount in all cases, foundation or direct? Okay, so when we talk about the direct placement, so basically you're supposed to pay an application fee of 1,000 euros to start the admission process and to start the preparation for the application to the university. So basically when we talk about the foundation program, uh, for annual foundation, we always require a student uh, to pay half of the price. So the full price for annual foundation is 5,990 euros. But right now, now, because of the current COVID situation, we do understand the whole like you know thing which is going on. And until the end of June, for all the annual foundation applicants, you are able to book your place on the foundation and start the admission for only 500 euros. So in this case, instead of paying half of the price, which would be 2,000, we usually like have 2,990 euros. Uh, in this case, you will pay just 500 euros and like your application will already start. So we will issue the confirmation of your studies and we will issue the document which confirms uh, your um, accommodation and will start the admission process. Uh, once, uh, for example, you will be admitted and you will get the visa until the beginning of the program in the end of September, the full amount should be paid okay so one more uh, quick question for that uh, if the student is applying directly for the university they are going to um, you know pay a uh, 1000 euros deposit right euros application fee okay. so if the application for, it's it's a guaranteed application that the student will get into the university i'm sorry you were just like the, the voice is not that good the sound okay i'll, I'll repeat it again if the student is paying 1000 euros for the application fee right exactly is it uh, possible that it will be adjusted in the fee which he has to pay after the commencement? Um, 1,000 euros application. Application fee is always separate from the tuition fee. So basically, after the application fee is paid and after student was successfully admitted to the university, after that, he will have a separately paying tuition fee for the university. So it can be all for one semester or for one year, depending which university and which major is that. Okay, so one more quick question. Does CIS offer Czech language course and is studies free after having Czech language? Exactly. Uh, this is a very big topic that definitely we can talk for a long time. Um, as I said, um, as I actually didn't say, um, but as I'm talking, as I'm actually working with the international market, definitely you should know about the possibility to study for free in Czech language. So basically, remember this foundation course that I told you where you study English language to reach until the B2 level. You can have exactly the same one, but study Czech language instead. So you will study Czech language from, from the beginning, from, from the alphabet, and in one year, you will reach to a particular level, which is supposed to be at least B2, B1, actually B2 in most cases. And after that, you are able to apply for your studies in Czech language free of charge. So you, and like, you know, in all the European countries, even in Germany, in Czech Republic and other European countries, you are able to study free of charge in a native language. You can do same with the Czech language, and for some, it's definitely a great opportunity to do that. But why I did not mention that from the early beginning? Because Czech language is Slavic language and it's very complicated to learn sometimes. So basically, like, you know, tuition fees are very affordable. And in case it's, uh, it's worse for you to uh, like have one year of studies and usually take a year and a half to reach until B2 level uh, for students that actually uh, do not speak Slavic language, um, then in this case, you definitely can consider that option as well. So you're coming for a foundation, you're learning Czech language, and after that, you are applying for your studies in university in Czech language, completely free of charge. So the system is exactly the same. The price for foundation is exactly the same. Just you are switching with the language. That's it. Okay, thank you. And one more thing I would like to address for you, because it is for you, maybe Shafi is writing. Thank you for answering the question so precisely. Such a great session, great for Team FES. Hamza Abdul Rahman and Anastasia, you have explained everything amazingly. 
Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Like it's my pleasure to answer all of the questions because as you can see, like I'm very passionate about the Czech Republic. I'm now in Prague. I'm calling you from Prague. And I can definitely tell you from my own experience and experience with hundreds of students from all over the world, the Czech Republic is a definitely very nice place where you can go and you can spend your student years. So definitely we will be here for you, as I said, to help you out. And thank you one more time for your kind words. It's my big, big pleasure to be here today and to answer all of your questions. Thank you so much for this answer and for everything you have, you know, just told us in a very precise manner. But uh, there is a student of mine. He is. He just asked. He did not get minimum percentage in high school or for master's CGPA information. I, I I wanted to you know elaborate this. If a person wants to get into Charles uh, that technical school, what should be the percentage? from HSC over here. This is what uh, he, he meant to ask. Okay, so basically you're asking about the average GPA, right? So basically the school one and the university one. Uh, so when it comes to universities of Czech Republic, especially when it comes to bachelor, they very rarely paying attention to that, especially even in case you're having the lower um, like scores when it comes to your high school, but you're having the nice application documents. In this case, you're still having chances to be admitted to the university. I could not tell you that it's very good, you know, that you're having the low score because uh, sometimes they're taking that into account as well but it can be like 15% of the application out of 100 so basically in case your like full application looks amazing and you actually provided a very good document and you had a very nice Skype interview with the representative you still have a chances of being admitted even though your scores in your high school uh, or even in your bachelor were not like the highest one okay so I hope, Mr. Ali, you have got all your answers very precisely, and I hope you understand everything. And if you do have any more questions before we leave, you can call me directly, you can text me directly, you can ask my whole FPS team, and we are here for you guys for your help. So um, Abdullah Azim is asking fully funded scholarships. Unfortunately, fully funded scholarships are not being offered, Abdullah, but yes, I think you have just missed it because the fee is very minimum into the university. So I think it's equivalent to a fully funded scholarship as well. So that's uh, all of the comments from the people who were watching us, who were listening to us. It was such a wonderful session with you. Such a detailed, designated, precise session. Thank you so much, Hamza. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to our audience. It was my pleasure. Thank you for your precise questions, because if not your precise questions, I'm sure that I will not be even that half of being good, you know? So thank you for your great help. Um, and uh, thank you for, for all the for your time that you've been listening to us. We've really been trying our best to give you as much information about Czech Republic and Prague as possible. And from my side, I can tell you that we are literally and very much looking forward to see you in Prague very soon in September. Right now, applications are still open and we're really looking forward to hear from you in case you will have any additional questions. Um, so hopefully I will see you in very very soon and uh, Charles International School will help you to obtain this incredible experience in Czech Republic in Prague and in top universities of Europe here okay thank you so much for your time I would like to say to everyone who was watching us who were you know listening to us thank you so much for joining us and I hope I will be back soon with another university as I always promised with you guys I would like everybody to follow us on Facebook, which is Facebook one uh, forward slash after your Facebook. I want you to follow me on Instagram, which is FPS.intl. I want you to follow us on Twitter, which is Fest Pakistan. So please, please, please do follow us. And if you have any kind of questions directly, just write it to me, write on any kind of social media. We would love to reply to you because of this COVID and pandemic. I know everybody is working from home, but to be very honest with you, this is not just pandemic and COVID. I am personally me, my side, and my complete FES team is always been there for your ease, guys. Thank you so much. As you all know, if you could see on my back that FES is always being like 
be guide Judy. Thank you so much. One last time to everyone, to Miss Anastasia from Prague and everybody who was watching us. It was such a lovely session and I will be back soon for you guys. I promise. Inshallah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night from my side. Your host, Amzar Rahman, signing out. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.